you'll stand this morning. Turn with your mark and in your Bibles to Psalm chapter 34. Psalm chapter 34. This is what God laid upon my heart this week. I probably won't be a real long message. We'll, we shall see. But I do believe that this is for somebody here today. Psalm chapter 34. We're going to begin uh, for, with verse... 17. Psalm 34, 17. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears, and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is dear to those who have a broken heart, and save such as have a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He guards all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. You may be seeing it. If you also want to turn to, I believe it's Romans chapter 8, we'll be looking there as well this morning. You ever been disappointed? I've asked that question, Lord. I'm trying to level set here for a second. Think about one of your greatest disappointments and how it made you feel. One of your greatest disappointments. You were expecting something and it did not happen. And, and the way that that disappointment made you feel. Uh, if you're like me, you felt maybe a little anger, a little bitterness, a mix of emotions, right? Uh, a frustration, maybe even a little fear, a little anxiety. Made you feel some doubt, right? Uh, you were disappointed, right? It, it made you feel a certain way, and it uh, could impact our thinking and our reasoning. It could impact the way that we see uh, things unfolding before us and the way that we see things instead of seeing them the way that God sees them. We see them through this filter, this lens of disappointment. Now that you've kind of thought about that, we're going to go one level deeper than disappointment. We're going to go to brokenhearted. Because there is a difference between being disappointed and being brokenhearted. The psalmist uses the word a broken heart or brokenhearted in chapter 34. This is David who is writing. He has been delivered from the hands of Abimelech, who had him and was going to kill him. But David uh, pretended like he was crazy and out of his mind. And so he was let free. And so he penned this psalm to talk about the faithfulness of God. <coughs> and he says that God is with those. He's near those who are brokenhearted. Near those with a broken heart. Now, the Hebrew word transfer, translated broken. It is a very complex word, unlike the English word, the words that we have, uh, Hebrew and Greek and Aramaic, they have lots of meaning to them. Uh, and they are best understood in circumstances. So let me tell you how that word broken works. It means to tear a ship from front to back, to rip it apart, to destroy it. So it is no longer recognizable as a ship. That means utter destruction. It means derailing, destroying to the point that there is no semblance of what it used to be. Especially, it cannot be used for what it was meant to be used for. It means utter destruction. Unrepairable. We had a, I've been in car accidents where there was, Broke, I don't even want to use the brokenness. There was damage. I had a car accident one time where I ran right into the back up of a pickup truck in my little tiny Cavalier. And it crushed the front like an accordion. Airbags went off, but that car was repairable. They came in, they replaced the front of it, they fixed it. It looked like it had never been damaged. It was repairable. It was not broken. That's disappointment. Right? Uh, disappointment is, it, it, it maims us for a moment, it, it, it affects us for a moment in time, 
uh, but uh, it can be fixed. You know, a little bit of joy, a little bit of good news, a little bit of change in circumstance, and then all of a sudden, you're up and running again. Right? It takes some time, but you're up and running again. Brokenness is when our car flipped over on 95 at 60 miles an hour, and it was so damaged they had to cut the roof off of it. Right? They actually had to cut the entire roof off of the car, and they had to break all the windows out of it, and they had to cut the door off the side. They broke it to the point that it could never be used again. In fact, Kelly showed me a picture afterwards of the sitting at the, uh, uh, wherever, the, 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 the junkyard, and it had the roof was just laid on top of it, completely collapsed, and it was, you know, absolutely unusable. It was broken. Unusable. Broken. Your heart, as the Bible is speaking about here, is the innermost being of who you are and who I am. It is the innermost being of you and I, the core of who we are. Saying that there are times in our lives when we are broken like that to the core of who we are, where it hurts so bad that it hurts to breathe, where it's so painful it feels like you're suffocating, where you're so much pain you don't even know how you're going to get up in the morning. There's so much hurt that you just don't know. You, you don't even want to open your eyes. You don't even want to roll out of bed. You think it would be better if you simply did not exist any longer. That's having a broken heart. Broken destroyed beyond repair. There are those of us who have been there with a broken heart. Mm -hmm. There are those of us who may right now be dealing <laughs> with a broken heart. You're barely here this morning. You don't want to be here. <coughs> you drug yourself out to be here, but you don't want to be here. Maybe you question even getting dressed or getting up out of bed. You question all the hurt and all the pain and all the suffering. You question all of it. You're beyond disappointment. You're into the broken and there's no hope. You feel hopeless and helpless. Please understand as someone who deals with depression and I, uh, bipolar disorder, so I understand all of those things. But listen, mental health is very important, so please, I'm putting that star by this right now. You guys know me. You know what I deal with. So you know I do not take any of those things lightly. But we live in a world where we have allowed a feeling of disappointment to become depression, to be treated like it's a death sentence. Mm -hmm. Now don't get me wrong, there are people that have chemical imbalances, so please, I don't want you to take me the wrong way, okay? So if, I'm struggling with this, but I want you to understand that there is a difference between being disappointed and, and we have a world that has caused disappointment and elevated it to make it so such a big deal mm -hmm. right on college campuses they don't even let people speak because they're so fragile we don't want to hear other people's opinions because we're so fragile that's where we're at now as a society so I'm not talking about a mere feeling I'm not talking about getting our feelings hurt I'm not talking about that type of pain. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I'm not saying that it's not there. I'm saying that we've watered down disappointment to the, th to the point that we think everything's disappointing. Whenever I don't get my way, I'm disappointed. Mm -hmm. Whenever the preacher doesn't say what I want him to say, I'm disappointed in him. Right? Whenever things don't happen, I'm disappointed. When we're disappointed in everything, we live to be disappointed. That's what I'm trying to make a distinction between story. being truly disappointed and then being broken hearted. Right. Many of us are disappointed and we haven't actually experienced being broken hearted. But those who have experienced being broken hearted, you know what I'm talking about. It goes beyond disappointment. It goes beyond a feeling. It goes down to the core of who we are where we believe we'll never be right again. Amen. We'll never be usable again. We'll never be put back together again. We have been utterly destroyed, ripped from stern to port. I don't know if that's correct. I don't know not of the terms, but 
front to back. <laughs> right? Act, stern, whatever it is. We are wrecked, destroyed. There is nothing left. We're unusable. What the psalmist says here is that even in that state of brokenness, God is with us. Yes, Amen. Amen. That he stands Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. with the broken heart. Thank you, midst of our pain and our suffering there may not be any hope in man there may not be any hope in ourselves but there is hope in God Amen. because we serve a God who can take the broken and make yes, them God. whole Amen. again Amen. thank you Lord we've seen we've seen in the Old Testament time and time again him taking people that have been broken and turning something great from it. Amen. Jesus took broken people and he healed them. People who were physically affected by infirmities that limited how they could live, that they were always going to be that way. And why was there any point in living anymore? Why? Why? I'm broken. It will never be fixed. I have no hope. I have no joy. I have no peace. Why am I even here anymore? God, Jesus had compassion and mercy, and he found those people. He sought those people out, and he put them back together again. Maybe this morning God is seeking somebody out who's been suffering in silence, who's broken. God said, I stand beside you. Amen. I stand with you. Maybe you're so broken that you cannot even comprehend or explain your pain. I've been that broken before where I could not explain why I felt the way I felt, why I was doing what I was doing. I, I wanted to not be here anymore. I didn't want to live anymore. I didn't want to be here anymore because of the hurt and the pain and the brokenness. But I had some people who interceded on my behalf. And God out of nowhere reached down through a source that I had never expected it from, reached out to me in my lowest point and fixed a broken heart. Fixed everything that was fractured. I mean, put it back together again so that it could be usable for the purpose that he had. Turn with me to Romans chapter 8. Verse 18. For I consider that the sufferings of the present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Yes. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in, in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption, the glorious liberty of the children of God. Verse 22. If you... Have your Bibles, or if you highlight or write, underline these verses. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also have the first fruits of the Spirit, when we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we are saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it, like with perseverance. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to Amen. those you, who are the called you, according to his purpose. Yes. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. 
Moreover, who, moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. And whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. Amen. Amen. Now, many times we like to quote, and we know that all things work together for them that love God and are called according to his purpose. And that is a great verse. But that verse is in between some other great verses. Because he says in verse 26, the spirit helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit himself yes. makes intercession. Amen. When you and I are so broken, when we are in so much pain, when we are hurting so much, that we cannot express our pain, we do not want to get out of bed, we do not want to move, we do not have hope, we feel helpless, the Holy Spirit yes. will intercede yes. on your behalf. Thank you, Father. Yes. When you can't pray for yourself, God is praying for you. Oh, let that sink in for a second. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When you cannot pray for yourself, God is praying for you because you have been sealed. You have been bought with a price through his suffering, through his pain, and through his resurrection. That you have been filled with the spirit, sealed until the day of salvation. The Holy Spirit inside of you knows your thoughts. He knows how you feel. The Holy Spirit inside of you knows your pain. He knows your hurt. He knows that you want to give up. He knows that you don't want to wake up in the morning. He knows everything you're experiencing and he can express it to the Father in a way that you cannot. And what's great is he also knows the mind of the Father. Yes. He already knows God's purpose for you. He already knows the Father's purpose for you. He knows the Father's plan for you. He knows what the Father has in store for you tomorrow and the next day and a month from now and a year from now and 10 years from now and 20 years from now. The Father knows and the Holy Spirit knows the mind of the Father, so when he intercedes on your behalf, he knows exactly what to pray, Amen. when to pray it, what to say, how to say it. Amen. Because he's in perfect communion with the Father and with you. Amen. He knows your mind and the Father's mind. He's yeah. the perfect person to intercede on your behalf. That's how we know he stands with us because he's in you and he's in me. Even with a broken spirit and a broken heart and crushed, even though I'm crushed, even though I'm perplexed, even though I don't know where I'm gonna, what I'm going to do next, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you in the pieces. Amen. Yes. He's there amongst the pieces. Yes. The brokenness, the hurt, the pain and the suffering. <coughs> and he, while he's interceding for us, can bring wholeness to brokenness. Amen. Amen. It's when he intercedes on our behalf, when we don't even know how to pray, when we don't even know how to explain how it is that we feel and what what's going through. When all we can do is cry. Amen. When you're crying out, God, I don't want to wake up tomorrow. The Holy Spirit is saying, God, Father, mm -hmm. they don't know what they're saying. I know that you have a plan for them. I know that you have a purpose for them, Father. I know your mind, and I know their mind. Have mercy and bring healing. I don't know about you, but that gets me excited this morning. Amen. Amen. If you're in the midst of brokenness, take comfort in these words this morning. That even when you don't pray for yourself, the Holy Spirit is praying for you. Amen. Amen. And 
because he's praying for you and because the spirit knows the mind of the father and the father knows the mind of the spirit all things will work to the good of those who are called according to his purpose Amen. those all go together you were bought with a price you were redeemed by the father and when you're in so much trial, tribulation, pain, and brokenness that you don't know how to pray, the Father loves you and I so much that the Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf. And because the Spirit knows the mind of the Father, the Father knows the mind of the Spirit, and the mind of the Spirit knows your mind, everything that happens to us, God will turn it around and work it out for His good. Thank you, Father. In the midst of our brokenness, there's healing. In the midst of our pain, there's peace. Yes. Jesus. Because the Father knows the mind of the Spirit, and the Spirit knows the mind of the Father, and the Spirit knows your mind, and He intercedes on your behalf. Yes. Amen. So what you're suffering through, the pain, the brokenness, the hurt, the destruction, feeling like you'll never be whole again, feeling like you'll never uh, be able to walk in his will again, feeling like you'll never be able to accomplish his purpose, feeling like you just don't want to wake up another day. The Holy Spirit is interceding and he will work it out. Because listen to this. Verse 29 goes with verse 28. Right? How does he say it? He says, who are the called according to his purpose. Now look at verse 29. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Amen. Who God foreknew. Who he knew in advance. Mm -hmm. He knew you. He knew you. He knew you. He knew you. He knew me. Whom he knew in advance. He predestined. What that means is he decided before you were ever born. He decided before he laid the foundations of the earth that you were going to be the call. That he was going to make you in the image of his son. He Amen. foreknew you. He predestined you. He determined that he was going to make you in the image of his son. He made a plan. That's why he who started a good work in you will finish it. Because before the foundations of the earth were laid, he predestined you. Amen. To be conformed in the image of his son. Moreover. He, who he predestined, he also called. And whom he called, he justified. And whom he justified, he glorified. When he foreknew you, and he predestined you, he called you. Which is why you call upon Christ as Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. And whom he called, whom he called, he justified. Meaning that you no longer have a debt that is owed to God, the Father. You're not separated from him any longer. The Holy Spirit is proof of that. And whom he justified. He glorified. Amen. Someday, I'm going to give up this old shell of a body. I'm going to give up my knees that hurt. I'm going to give up my neck that hurts. All my battle scars from past mistakes, all my pain, all my suffering, all that, all that junk that's in the physical body. And it's going to be glorified. Yes. Yeah. With the sound of the trump. Mm -hmm. And the voice of the archangel. Mm -hmm. yes. And an instant. And the blinking of an eye. Those who are dead in Christ will rise first. And those of us who are alive and remain. Mm -hmm. 
we will be called up and changed, transformed Amen. in an instant. Amen. So I'll never hurt Thank again. You, Jesus. I'll never have pain again. Thank you. I'll never suffer again. I will never be broken yes. again. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Because I will be walking every single day on streets of gold. I will be walking to the city designed by the one who created me, loved me, called me, predestined me, chose me, yes. glorified me. Amen. Amen. The Bible says there will be no son because Jesus will be the son. Amen. <laughs> Wherever we go, we will be in his radiance and his Amen. glory. Amen. Can I comprehend that right now? No way our human minds can understand that. We, we just get a small glimpse because in our flesh there is no way we can experience the glory of God. But there is coming a day when you and I are glorified where we will spend eternity with no night, no rising of the sun, no setting of the sun. There will be no understanding of time because we will live outside of time. We will spend every waking moment in the glory of the sun. Yes. 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 No more aches, no more pain. No more suffering. No more hurt. Yes. None of that. Amen. Because Paul says we have a hope. We have a hope. And the New Testament word for hope is not like you and I. That Greek word translated hope does not mean wishful thinking. Right. Like I hope I won a million dollars. <laughs> right? It's not wishful thinking. In the New Testament, hope means guarantee. So our hope is guaranteed, not in what I can see, but with what I cannot see. Because my hope is guaranteed, because God's word is guaranteed. Amen. That's right. The Bible says, and hope cannot disappoint. Amen. Because God's word is guaranteed, can never be let down, and nothing will ever uh, destroy me, it will always work out for my Thank good. Amen. Spiritually. I do not have to be broken. I do not have to be alone. And I do not have to be lost. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit lives inside of me. He lives inside of you. He intercedes on our behalf. Amen. And God guaranteed when he foreknew you before time began that he will complete the work that he started. Amen. That's how we know that he will. Don't give up hope. Don't lose hope. Don't give up. Don't walk away. <coughs> The suffering in this present time cannot compare to the glory that awaits us. Amen. Amen. And Paul knew what he was talking about because Praise that God. man suffered. Praise God. Hold on. Hold on. Thank you for listening to this message. We hope that you enjoyed it and were blessed by it. Each month we have people from all over the world who listen to the messages made available. If you've been blessed by this ministry, would you consider making a donation of any amount to help support us as we continue to reach the loss for Christ? Donations can be made online at www.reviveoc.org or by check at Revive Outreach Church, 411 Chatham Heights Road, Suite 101, Fredericksburg, Virginia, 22405. Thank you for your prayers and your continued support. May God richly bless you.